Prologue. Tilda, Tilda. I stared down at my daughter that lay asleep in my arm. I blinked several times. Trying to make the tears go away. I have some news regarding your daughter. Mrs. Halt. A group of doctors at this hospital ran multitudes of testes on your daughter and we still haven't figured out what is wrong with your daughter's body. The doctor said. Is there any way to find out what's wrong? I cried. He shook his head and said. No. I'm afraid you have to let her go. There's no way of saving her now. She only has a few days left. My heart squeezed and the more I tried to hold in the tears, the more my eyes burned. Let my child go. I thought. The doctor quietly stepped away and existed the room. Let my first child go. And only a few days. I thought. I squeezed the only daughter that I have in my arms and kissed her forehead as tears rolled down my face. The door of the hospital room quietly opened. I looked up and it took me a few seconds to see clearly that it was the most famous pediatrician, Edward Cohen, who was standing in front of me. Dr. Cohen's quiet steps approached me. Dr. Cohen. I whispered as I grabbed his arm. Dr. Cohen. Please help me. She must be the one. Dr. Cohen said to himself. Please help me. Please. I will do anything. I'll do anything. I can't give you all of my money. I can't give you my house. I do anything. Just help my daughter. I know I'll own you. But please help me. I'll tell you what. I'll take her with me and I'll see what I can't do about this because I think I know the problem here. Dr. Cohen said calmly. My eyes widened. Please remember to hand in your family record to the nurses at the front desk under my name. Theirs began to form again. What can I do for you in return? I asked. He thought about it for a second before he leaned in and whispered it. I quickly agreed. Because in that moment, all I'd about care about was saving my daughter. My one and only daughter. There's no other way of saving her. He was the best doctor and her life meant everything to me. I handed my daughter over and he carried her gently in his arm. He existed the room before I could say any more. Honey. Everything's going to be all right. My husband whispered and squeezed me in his my arms. I nodded as the tears started to pour down. It took a few hours before Dr. Cohen returns back into the room with Vanessa in his arm. He walks in and closes the door behind him. Okay. I have the results and I know what's the problem. But I can't tell you. Dr. Cohen whispers and looks over his shoulder. What I can't tell you is that you gave birth to a special baby. She is different from everyone else. She is not stable. Yet. What do you mean not stable yet? My husband asks. She has power that not everybody in the world has. From this day on. She is different. She will need time to control her power. Right now. She is not stable because her power is controlling her. To make sure that in the future this doesn't happen again. She's going to have to take these medicines. Trust me. It will help. Dr. Cohen says. What do you mean by power? This doesn't make any sense. I say. This doesn't need to make any sense to you. But remember the deal? I looked at him in disbelief. Should I even have trust this doctor? Is he really the best pediatrician? I got to go. I have another patient waiting for me. And like I said. I can't say much about it. Dr. Cohen says. He gets up and exists. He left the medicine on the table next to me. I look down at Vanessa in my arms. You got to be kidding me. Seventeen years later. Tilda, Tilda. UMM. Vanessa. Please come home right now. I have something important to say to you. Mom says on the phone. Mom. Are you all right? Is everything all right? I ask concernedly. Yeah. Yeah. Everything is fine. Just come home. Okay. She asks. Okay. I will. But why are you whispering? Don't worry about that. Just come home. Okay. She continues. Yeah, mom. But really, my mom cuts me off. Vanessa Halt. Oh. I'll be right there then. Bye. Mom. See you later. I sang. Wait. Actually. I will be waiting for you in the office. All right. Okay. Bye honey.
Mom says before she hang up. I gave the phone back to the secretary. Ms. Song. She put down the phone and with her southern accent she said. Yo pumpkin pie. I think your mama is going to pick you up soon. You better hurry and get your things packed. Okay. I said. I'll come right back. All right darling. Gallop along. She said and turns back to do her thing. I ran down the hall to composition class and packed all of my things. I went back to the office again. This time, my mom was there filling out some form. Hey, mom. I said, relieved that she is okay. She quickly looks up and shoves the papers that she was filling out in her little brown bag that she carries everywhere. Hi, honey, she said, smiling as she pushed some of her hair to the side of her face. What was that paper about? I asked. Looking down at her bag. Her smile dropped. And I could see that she was trying to put the smile back on. She put one hand on her bag to make sure it was closed. Oh. That's nothing. Really. Let's go home now. She said and guide my shoulders towards the back door that led to the parking lot. Okay, ee. -e. I said stiffly. But I could feel that my mom was hiding something from me. When we stepped outside, I shielded my eyes from the blazing sun. I blinked several times before my eyes adjust to the brightness. We got into the car and Mom started the car. It was silent all the way from the school to our house. The atmosphere in the car was extremely awkward and tense. My mom drove around a corner and I could saw our house. It was just another ordinary house that anyone could be passing by. But today, it was different. Outside of our house. There were two long limos. My mom stopped the car a few blocks away from our house. I heard my mom sigh softly before I turned to her. I knew that from the very beginning you were hiding something from me. Tell me now. Mom. What is this? I said. Pointed at the very rich. Looking people outside of our house. Honey. Mom said softly. Getting out of the car. She paused deciding whether she wanted to break it to me now or later. We'll talk about it in the house. Okay. She slammed the car door shut and started walking towards the house. I quickly followed her. Hi. Mrs. Halt. How are you and Vanessa doing? The teen dad asked. I raised my eyebrow at him. How does he know my name? Mom better have a damn good explanation about this whole crap. I thought. Crossing my arms. I am doing very good. How about you? Mr. Cohen. My mom said. Smiling at him. Before shaking his hand. But there was something in her eyes that told me that something bad is about to happen. I looked at the teen mom. Damn she looks like a model straight from the Blooming Dales magazine cover. So thin and beautiful. Who is she? Is she a supermodel? I thought. I am also doing very well. Mr. Cohen said. I looked at the sun. Whoa. Is he gorgeous? He also looked like a male model straight from the runway. I thought. Staring at him for five more seconds. I can't tell that his type. Girls just take a look at him and they would fall for him madly. I rolled my eyes. I squinted my eyes at the sun. My head started to feel light and dizzy. I looked at the boy again to see that his mother is whispering something in his ear. I only caught the word. Love. Sorry to keep you all waiting. But let's go inside. My mom said and took out the keys to open the door. As we walked in. I can't feel that boy's eyes at me. Please sit here. My mom said and they sat down in silence. That boy's eyes are still on me. Eyeing my body like seeing if my body was a type of body that he likes. I didn't dare to look at him and I didn't like him already. After a moment. My father came home. Hello, Mrs. and Mr. Cohen. My father said. Again. I sense something between them. They have a connection. Strange. Father settled down and looked at me and then looked at Mom. Mom looked at him back. Nudge him a little. This was awkward and I can't take it anymore. Okay. What is going on? I asked. Interrupting the silence. My parent froze. I feel foolish in front of the guest. Whoever they are. I still feel foolish. My parent turned and faces me. How should I say this? 
honey. Mom said and clasped her hand together. I know when she says how should I say this. Honey. Phase. It means there's bad news ahead. I gulped. I crossed my fingers. Behind my back. Hoping it not something really bad. Please. I said a silence prayer. Please. Don't make it really bad. U.M.M. How should I say it? Mom said again. I waited patiently and sit back. I was trying to act patient. I looked at my father and he was rubbing the soft spot between his index finger and thumb finger. He always says that when he is nervous. Um, um You are proposed to Jason Cohen. Should I say? My mom questioned herself. And by the name Jason Cohen. I know exactly who he was. The super sexy guy in my living room. But I didn't look at him. I was too confused to look at him. You got to be kidding. Right? I asked her. I stared at my mom for a moment to make sure she is not joking. My mom has a funny personality. But this got to be a joke. This shouldn't be a type of thing that she should be joking about. My mom didn't say anything. Instead father started speaking. Yep. You heard your mother. Why are doing this? This is so sudden and random. What is this about? I asked. And was about to throw more question at them. But I didn't. Well. Remember when you were eight years. Old. You ask us why you have to keep on eating these medicine and why you can't miss taking the medicine. Even a day. Dad asked softly. Yeah. 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 I said impatiently this time. I can't hold my patience in any more. I wish I could just wake up from this terrible nightmare. Well. Mom said. You know the story when you were born. You. I know. I was weak. I was different. And the doctor cured me by giving me the medicine and now I am beyond healthy and... I said... Yeah. You know that doctor is Dr. Cohen. And... Um, um You know. You were really weak. You could have passed away. But this special doctor decided to help us. He... Said that he would help us. If only you would marry his son. Now... You got to be kidding me. I said... I am sorry honey. But this is the truth. Mom said quickly. How come you didn't tell me about the deal a long time ago? Why are you telling me now? Why didn't you explain this when I asked you about the medicine? When I was eight. I said. Getting up. My anger was boiling in my blood and I feel like screaming any moment. I'm sorry. Honey. I should have. But I thought that you were too young to understand. Mom explained. Getting up to settle me down. She put a hand on my shoulder. I stepped away from her hand. To let her hand fall. You always think I am too young for everything. You kept everything from Emmy. You lied to Emmy saying that you told Emmy everything when I asked you did you tell Emmy everything. You didn't tell Emmy the truth about my life. You kept Heidi all a secret. I shouted. Honey. I am so sorry. It was my fault. I should have told you. But it was only for your goods. I mom said and stepped closer to me. But I was too angry to listen. I didn't care and it was too much. I don't want to hear about IT. I had enough. I screamed. This is too much. I don't care anymore. I shoved everyone away and ran for the door. It was too much. I have to get away. My mind screamed to me. I threw the door open and ran outside. I could feel my eyes burned. Not only from the sun's blazing rays. I continued running and running and running. Not know where I was going. But I know I have to get away from that house. She lied to me all along. She kept it all a secret. She did everything for me. Every bad thing for me. She doesn't care about my feeling. She never cares. I thought and my tears fell one by one. I blinked through tears and looked around. The park. I heard running footsteps behind me. I turned around and regretted. I wish I continued running. But I see him instead. Jason. Stupid Jason. I wanted to shout at him. He ran up to me and I quickly wiped my tears away. Where are you going? He panted out. I walked away. Going to the swing and sit down. He caught up to me and said again. Where are you going to go? Why do you care? Asshole. 
I said to him. He froze, but snapped back to reality. Because I... We are going to get married soon. He smirked and gently brushed his index finger under my chin. I slapped his finger away. Please don't touch me. Asshole. I said and sent him dagger looks. But only his smirk got bigger. I am going to hate him so much. I thought. Move. I am going to swing. I commanded. I don't obey commands. He said. Trying to be a wise guy. Then. Learn how to. I said and started swinging. I kicked him several times and he moved every time. He eventually gave up and sat on the swing next to me. It was silence for a moment and I feel peace. Finally. I am away from the problem I thought and inhale a deep breath. When I was starting to feel really bored. I got up and walked home. I want to walk home. So I looked behind my shoulders and saw that he was following me. I looked ahead and stopped. He walked up beside me. May I help you? I asked him. I don't need any help. He said. Maybe you stop following me then. Stalker. I said to him. I have to make sure you are okay. He said. At least don't follow right behind my tail. And I want to walk home alone. I shouted at him. Do you need the definition of alone? Or do you want me to spell the word alone for you? And you could at least walk on that street and still watch me. I didn't wait for him to answer and I continued to walk. I walked along the tree. I extend my hand to touch the bark of the tree. I walked all of the way home. I walked up to the house. But I stayed on the outside. I could hear their conversation. Yeah. I heard my father said. It would be better off if they lived together. Don't you agree? A woman's voice said. I figure it was Jason's mom. Yeah. Whatever's the better for them. My mom agreed sadly. We have to focus them to get as close to each other as possible. I couldn't take it anymore. So I threw the door open and their conversation stopped. They stared at me. I sorry honey. Now? Mom said. I know. I hear you guys. You want me to go. I am going to go now. You want to focus me to do something that I never wanted. I understand mom and dad. I said bitterly. Looking at Jason. Behind me. Sweetheart. I mom started. I don't want to hear it. Mom. You know I wanted to be a single for the rest of my life. I told you that. That I don't want to marry anyone when I grow older. I have told you. Why are you forcing me now? I asked her. She responded. But I didn't have the heart to listen. I stomped up the stairs and into the room. I locked the door and cried in silence by the door. Someone knocked at the door and I screamed. Go away. I don't want to see you. And throw my brush at the door. I don't care if it was my mom or dad. Or is it the guest? I certainly don't care if it was Jason the bastard. I sat by the door for maybe an hour. Or maybe it felt like an hour. I grabbed my suitcase. I knew that they were still down there. I could hear their voice. I knew if I go down there again. We would have an argument again. There was no point. Talking to them I thought. They have planned everything out already and I bet there would not change their mind no matter what happens. I opened the suitcase and throw everything in. I didn't care how messy it was. When everything was packed. I make sure the door was locked. I threw myself on the bed and fall asleep. Separations and totally confused. Tilda Tilda. The next time I woke up. I was on an airplane. I looked around. Why am I on the plane? I asked. I looked next to me and saw Jason. I sighed. I looked on my other side and nobody was there. Just me and Jason. Good. You are awake. Jason said suddenly causing me to jump. I turned to him. Why am I on the plane? I asked. Because you are moving to my house. He explained. Wasn't I in my room? I asked him. Your mother has the key so she unlocked the door and I carried you to the plane. He said that last part louder and smirked. I rolled my eyes. I didn't need you to carry me. You know. I said. Yes. I do need to carry you. He said and brushed his index finger under my chin. I slapped it away and murmured. Whatever. 
you are so annoying. I got up and sat on the seat next to me. Away from Jason. I ordered water and drank it down with one gulp. I was thirsty. I looked at my side and Jason was on the seat next to me. Why do you always follow? Stalker? I asked him. Narrowly my eyes. He turned towards me and smirked. He slowly leaned in enough for me to smell him. He smelled like cologne and shampoo mixed together and said because I like you. His hot breath brush against my ear was he spoke. I shivered a little. He leaned back and I stared at him blankly. I blinked several times to snap back to reality. His smirk grew bigger when he notices. I scowled at him. Yep. He is totally the type of guy who thinks he can take anybody's heart. But not mine, I thought. Tilda, Tilda. When the right end. We got off and headed for the exist. Along with Mr. and Mrs. Cohen. The guard led us to a limo. And I noticed that we were the only ones on the plane and walking out in the airport lane. I raised my eyebrow. Are we famous? Or are we royalty? Or are we rich or your family is just like that? I asked him. He chuckled. We are all of them. All? I asked and rolled my eyes. He was. I thought. We got into the limo and the driver started driving right away. In the car. Mrs. and Mr. Cohen talked about the wedding all of the way. I didn't listen most of the time. All I know is that the wedding is an early autumn wedding and it will be hold two weeks after the full moon. It was a full six-hour car ride before we arrived to the house. The maids quickly came out and grabbed the luggage. Okay. Let's say about nine maids. Okay. They might be rich. But they are not royalty I thought. I got out of the car and looked at the house more carefully. It was a strange area where the mansion is located. The mansion was big and beautiful. But the strange thing about the mansion was that it is next to the forest. The mansion was totally different from the forest setting. I stared at the mansion and the forest for a moment. I wonder why they choose this location. I thought. Mrs. Cohen put on her brilliant smile and clapped her hands. Vanessa. Welcome to the family. Now you are considered one of the Cohens. I gave her a weak smile and thanked her. Okay. Now hurry along. Mrs. Cohen said and everyone got out. We went inside the house and I think I heard myself gasp a little. Jason smirked. I didn't know why he smirked. It's not like he built the mansion himself. Jason. Please show Vanessa your room. Mrs. Cohen said and Jason took my hand and pulled me. When our hands met for the first time. I slapped it away. Sending him death glare. His hand was warm. Soft and welcoming. But every part of him was forbidden to me. Like I said. Please don't touch me. I told him. He led me to his room and I looked around. I noticed that my suitcase was on the floor already. This room is about ten times the size of my room. Man. How rich can they be? I thought. He closed the door and leaned towards me and whispered. We are sharing this room. Stop invading my personal space. Asshole. I shouted and shoved him away from me. I shoved him weaker than I thought. Because he only took one step back. He laughed and brushed his index finger under my chin. Again I slapped it away. Geez. What part of don't touch me do you not understand? I want to shout at his face. Geez. Can't even touch you a little. He said. Yeah you can't. I said. And stay away from me. He chuckled. I walked over to my suitcase and started unpacking. The closet is over there and the drawers are over there. Jason said pointed in all sort of direction. I rolled my eyes. I walked over to the closet and pushed all of his clothes to one side and grabbed my clothes and hang everything up on the other side. I walked over to the drawers and grabbed his things and put it in the lower two drawers. The top two drawers are for me. I put my bras. Panties and swimming suits on the top drawer and the lower drawer for personal things. What are you doing? Jason asked by my side. Leaning on the wall. Separation. I explained. Your side of the closet. My side and your drawers. My drawers. Are you serious? He asked. What do you think? I asked him back and crossed my arms. This is so stupid. He said. Number it is not. I told you. 
stay away from me. And you clearly don't know the definition to that. So I decided to have a separation. I said back and he just shook his head in disbelief. Then, there was a knock at the door. Come in Jason shouted. The door opened and Mr. Cohen stepped in how's everything going? Mr. Cohen asked. Everything is going. I started. But was interrupted by that eight dollars dollars face Jason. Everything is going perfectly. Father? He said and smiled. Shut up. I'm talking. Beach. I want to say to his face. But Mr. Cohen was there. Well. That's great. Mr. Cohen said and clapped his hand together. How many I help you? Father? Jason asked. I just want to talk to Vanessa about something. May I speak to her alone? He asked. Jason nodded and looked at me before walking out of the door. Mr. Cohen sat down. I got a closer good at him. He was handsome and charming. His looks reminds me of the asshole Jason. Blonde hair with leafy green eyes. I'm sorry. Vanessa that we have rushed everything here. Mr. Cohen apologized. I nodded and say everything that comes to the top of my head. Oh H. It's nothing and everything is perfect right now. I said. He nodded and asked. I was just wondering. If you brought your medicine with you. I nodded my head. Good. Can you show them to me? He asked. Sure. But why? I asked and realized that I was rude. I'm sorry if I'm. Number it is okay if you ask. I was planning on tell you anyways. I am planning to prescribe you a new medicine. Mr. Cohen explained. Unlike Jason. Mr. Cohen understands people's feelings. I thought. I got up and go get my medicine that I ate my whole life. I handed to him. He took it and poured one out. A pill with red liquid on one side. He shook it for a moment and studied it. I will take it and study it in my laboratory. Mr. Cohen said. In the meantime. You take this pill. He hand me a bottle of pill. It was different. Instead of liquid on one end. The whole pill was silver. Just plain old silver. This pill will get you sick. You'll understand later. We are going to have meetings if you want to. Mr. Cohen said. But I just shook my head. Even though I have thousands of questions. Okay. I will take these medicines in my laboratory and examine these. Meanwhile. You take this pill. Every other day for every meal. Mr. Cohen explained. Still looking at the old medicine. If you need anything or have any problem. Just look for me in my laboratory. Again. I nodded. Great. Now I have to go. Bye and welcome to the family. He said smiling. You have a good day. He said before walking out. I stared at the new medicine. Why do I need medicines? The old one was perfectly fine I thought. The doorknob turned and Jason came in what happened? He asked. Nothing. It is none of your business. I said and shoved the medicine behind my back. I guess I haven't done it fast enough. Because Jason turned pale. No. He whispered. I looked at him. What? I asked him. Let me see that. He said louder. No. I shouted. He jumped on me and wrestled me. He is heavy. I swear I could be crushed under his weight. Get off of me. I screamed. Wrestling him back to break free. But he was so much stronger than me. He quickly snatched the medicine from my hand and held it too high for me to reach. He got off of mine and I tried tippy. Towing. But I still could reach the medicine. Give I.D. back you A.S.S.W.I.P.E. I screamed. Jason continued to hold it high up. He studied the bottle and he turned even paler. Number it can't be that one. He whispered. What? I asked angrily. I stared at him and blinked for a moment. I froze. Was that my imagination? But did his eyes turn sliver? Like the color of the medicine. I thought for a moment. I stood here speechless. He stomped towards the door and headed out. I shook my head. That can't be. Maybe it was just my super eyes. I have super eyes and that caused me to see things that no one can see. I swore it was not an imagination my other side said. I shook my head and ran out of the door trying to find Jason. I ran down the hall until I heard shouting. Father you can't do this. 
I heard Jason shouting. I walked towards the door and leaned on it. S-H-H-H-H. Keep it down son. I heard Mr. Cohen whispered. Dad. Ivy is too early. She is going to freak out. Jason exclaimed and I can infer that the word she means me. Number honey. It is not too early. She has to know about it. Another voice said. By the high-pitched voice. I know is Mrs. Cohen. She is going to think that we are monsters. Jason said. What in the world are they talking about? I thought. Completely confused. No. I am not going to let her take the medicine yet. I am going to. Jason said. But was cut off. Jason. Listen. Mr. Cohen exclaimed. Listen to me. I will decide when I want to tell her and I decide when she should eat the medicine. Which is today. And I don't think it is too early. I have never heard Mr. Cohen's voice sound that mad. Then. The next time I know is that the door swung open and I was falling sideways. The fall seemed slow. Like it was on purpose for me to see everything. And this time. I swear I am seeing what I am seeing. And this time I was believe what I saw. Jason's eyes were silver. Instead of deep green and when I was fall. Jason made one swift move and he caught me with one arm. My eyes widened to stare into his eyes. But just like one swift of movement, the eyes changed back to green. I peeled my eyes away from his so-called green eyes and looked at the arm that was hold me. Everything seemed so slow. Everything. So slow for me to see all of the details. Until I broke it. I got off of Jason's arm and straightened myself up. I saw at him. He was holding my old medicine in my hand. Then I looked at him eyes again and took a step back. You know half of what you need to know. Jason said staring into my eyes. My mouth was dry. Hard for me to speak with my voice is stuck in my throat. I continue staring at him. Not saying anything. Let's have a conversation. Mr. Cohen spoke. But I don't dare tear my eyes off Jason. In case I see another thing. Jason walked towards me and tried to take my hand but I snatched it away. I turned around and looked at his whole family. We can talk about it. Vanessa, Jason said. I slowly sat down on a seat, making sure my legs could still hold me up. Everyone took a seat and I could feel my heart beating quickly in my ears. I clenched my jaw. Okay. Let's talk about it before it is too late. Mr. Cohen said. Everyone stared at me. Then there was a long uncomfortable silence in the room. You know the medicine that I half gave you? Mr. Cohen asked. I nodded slowly. He took in a sharp breath. You know what dad? Let's not talk about this. Jason said and he turned towards me. Let's drop this and pretend nothing happened. I stared at him. I have a feeling it has something to do with my birth and who I am. I got a feeling they were keeping a secret from me. As much as I want to say yes. I said. No. Jason stared at me and has gone pale. I don't think you will drop this until I find out. If it is something about my birth or who I am. I am going to find out. I want to know it. That's me. I said. Then there was silence. I just want to scream at them to tell me. Because this was taking forever. Until Mr. Cohen started talking. I guess we have to tell her. You know, honey, that medicine is to wake your inner you up, Mrs. Cohen said and I turned towards her, who has stayed quiet for a while. I stared at her. Inner me. What do you mean inner me? I am wake. I said, feeling stupid. How should we say this? You have power and you. What? I said, power. This was ridiculous. I am feeling like I am back to being the child believing that there was magic powers and mythical creatures in the world. Yes. You do have a power and what I want to say next is that you are truly a werewolf. Mrs. Cohen continued. Okay. They are rich and everything. But they seriously having problems telling me that I am a queer wolf. Ridiculous. I thought. Weird wolf. I asked. Remember your mother told you that you were born weak. Mr. Cohen said. I turned to him and nodded. You were weak when you were born. You have problems and I don't mean mental problems. But inner. 
Self problems. He said. My mouth hung. They seriously want me to believe them. And inner. Self problem. What is that? What do you mean? I asked. I was trying to float with this cool story that I was listening to. You know how we said that you have power. When you were born. Your power was too strong. Causing your body to be tired. Your power was so strong that you couldn't control it yourself. The power was wild. You lose a lot of energy like that and you soon became weak. Mr. Cohen explained. I nodded my head. We are not joking. You are a werewolf and we all are. Mrs. Cohen said and stared at me. I stared into her eyes. And the next thing that happened. Scared me so much.